morning. Okay, so it's morning here. It's 11.30 Mountain Standard Time in the United States, and we're gonna join up with Annika Malik, and I believe it's like 6.30 p.m. in the UK. So exciting that we can um, connect like this internationally. I see people already joining. Hello, hello. Welcome to Tech Talk. I just invited to join me. So excited. Hello. Hi. 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 Well, you look lovely. Oh, yeah. Annika and I did a pre-live the other day and I just woke up and I'm honest when <laughs> I answer my phone. So um, she got to see me in quite a fright. <laughs> No, you were fine. It was morning. It's excusable. Come on. We're all human, aren't we? <laughs> yeah. So good morning. We have Annika Malik with us today. Um, I love Annika's story. And so the reason why we chose her for a tech talk is because she can relate to so many techs that are just starting out. She too um, has been licensed for a year and a half, but her struggle for finding education has um, it, it's inspiring to see how she's kind of rose above and, and found the next level. Um, and she's moved around a lot and all of that. And so I think she can relate to a lot of us that are having to restart and always rebrand ourselves and get ourselves going and how to do it. And so um, welcome, Annika. I appreciate that you said yes. Thank you for having me. And Another special thing that um, Annika and I were talking about is that her sister is also licensed nail tech who should be watching us today. I think she is. Yes, say hi if you're there. <laughs> and so you get to be a superstar, um, not only in our group um, internationally, but also with your family. And that's so precious. Yeah. Um, so Annika, why did you decide to become a nail tech? Well, it's a bit of a kind of story. Well, I, I was working as a support worker for eight years and this, I loved it, don't get me wrong, I absolutely loved it, helping people, um, different challenges every day, lots of people do care work, they know what it's like, it's, it is amazing, it's really rewarding. But then I started to feel like I had lots of illness around me, I was surrounded with lots of, how to put it, negativity in a way. Anyway, it started getting to me in the end because it does after a, while, after a little while. And um, so, yeah, and I was, there is Leah. Hi, Leah. <laughs> yes, my sister. Hi, Leah. Leah. Um, so, Leah was studying to become a beautician and she's superb, obviously. And, uh, and she had a little part in it, really. She was kind of inspiring me to do it and also... My husband, uh, he just randomly got me like a set of gel polishes and LED lamp for Christmas. Don't know where that came from, but and that kind of combination of combination of everything and, and yeah, that's how it started. And I thought, why not creating something beautiful instead and just lifting myself spiritually? I thought I could do it, and I thought, yeah, I, I could actually be good at it if I if I commit. And uh, you know, you still have to keep pushing yourself and you have to uh, find the ways to learn and, and improve yourself and, and all that. So yeah, that's what I did. And, and yeah, it's yeah. going far, so, so far. So between the time that you decided that you wanted to go to school and you actually went to school, sometimes there's a gap where people are like, I don't know, I don't know if I can afford it. Um, when was your breaking moment that you're like, I'm just going to do this and you went and signed up? Like, was there a time frame between there? No, there wasn't actually. I'm pretty much the kind of person, if I set my mind on something, i got to go for it. Mind you, it drives my husband mad sometimes. He's like, you and your plans. He knows that if I decide something, that's it. That's what it's going to be. And uh, so, yeah, and he's so supportive as well. I'm really lucky. My husband is amazing. And, uh, yeah, so he supported me, and, and I just went for it. So, yeah, I signed up with, with, um, with this um, academy. And um, and I did training. Wasn't really happy with my first training, mind you, because I am originally from Estonia, and I I was wearing nails for years when I was back at home, 
and um, and the quality over there is is fabulous, fantastic. And um, when I did my training here, I knew that it could be so much better. Um, to the point, really, after my first training, I did not um, start doing nails as a service because. I felt like I don't want to offer a bad quality to people and also kind of, in a way, spoil my reputation because later on it would have been harder to build it up again. So I decided not to start work straight away. And um, then I just planned to have a trip and training back in Estonia because over there the quality is so much higher. Yeah, so, so yeah. that's what I did. And after that I got my uh, certificates from there and, and I came back. To England and I started working and it's and it's been great yeah and it is very different because the feedback I get from my customers is the quality and service they used to over here they're like that is so different I never seen stuff you do you know like different techniques and, and ways I'm sure there's lots of people out there who do it and um, sculpting nails the way I do or um, average nail technician does in Estonia or the other countries um, there's, but yeah, in my area, I don't think there's many nail techs out here who actually uh, do it the way I do it. So, yeah. Yeah, it's, um, Did you notice there was a big difference in the cost of the difference of schooling or were they kind of similar, but you just got more out of one? Um, actually, doing it over here in England, it was much more expensive and I got much less out of it. In Estonia, I paid... Um, almost a half of amount that I paid here in England and I got training one-on-one -on -one, and I was actually in a salon doing training and I was doing um, customers there and then so I did about 15 customers with my teacher before she she um, certified me so that was really really good and it, it just boosts my confidence and everything it just gives you that really good kickstart you know Instead of yeah. instead of doing um, theory like we did, and um, and when I did my training in England, the, the teacher unfortunately she was really good. She was really brilliant with acrylic nails, and apparently she's done it for years and years and years. But when she was teaching sculpting with forms and everything with with hard gel, she really struggled. It was actually quite funny. She quickly sculpted the snail, took the form of, and started filing so quickly, just we wouldn't see all the spiky bits and all sorts of what's going on. It was so funny. But bless her, she tried her hardest, but you know, it wasn't quite what I was looking for, so yeah. Yeah, I can say as an instructor and educator, you know, if you specialize in something, then great, you know, teach that. But one that's trying to get you your broad license all the way across, they really do have to keep up with the, the standards, the rules, regulations, the products and stuff. And so sometimes you're right, it's our education that can even hold us back. So kudos to you for going the next step. I mean, it was interesting that you were going to pay more for less education, but that seems to be what's common around um, all around the world is that yeah. you really have to do your homework and find what school is best for you and, and talk to the people who have graduated in the classes prior and see what, how, what did they learn in school that's similar to how they're doing it in the salon. You know, did that really help them or did they have to go on for continuing education? And Oh, I, I, can't, I can't stress enough that I'm always saying I wish that there was a universal um, regulations for all of us so that yeah. our base education is the same. It would make such a massive difference, definitely. Yeah. 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 So you decided to specialize in hard gel. And, you know, hard gel is one that um, it seems like. So I've been in the industry for 25 years, and of course, when I first got licensed, it was acrylic. And and I laugh because it wasn't pink and white acrylic. It was just an opaque, gross yellowy colored um, acrylic, and then everything we did was with polish or airbrushing on top. And so... Uh, likewise, throughout the years, I had to um, also try to master other things to find out what what products I was going to be best in. And now it's almost like you either do acrylic or you do hard gel. Um, is it is two different techniques and and stuff like that. And people have their specialties. And some are really good about crossing and being able to do both. Um, mm -hmm. I personally stayed on the acrylic side of it. I do hard gel, and I actually very much like it, but. Um, my best work comes from acrylic. And so how did you decide that you were just going to go for the hard gel? Um, I don't.
don't really know, to be honest. I just, the, the critic is kind of, well, I, I think it's influence of Estonian quality, really, because in Estonia, if you go into nail salon and you ask acrylics and they were like, why? Because gel is so much better. It's just amazing. And you go like, I was telling them, for example, in salon, how nails done in England, we use, uh, we use, most of it is acrylic. Nobody even heard of hard gel. Believe it or not, in here, at least the area where I live, the salons are offering powder gel and just saying like, and then charging more for it. As far as I know, there is no such thing as powder gel. It's either acrylic or gel. So basically they're still doing acrylic saying that it is gel. And they also use plastic tips, they don't sculpt, which means uh, it damages, well, it depends on the nail tech, absolutely. I know there's loads of sayings and arguments about it. It always depends on the nail technician to start off with. It's not the product that uh, damages clients nails, it's the nail technician. So basically what, what generally happens here is they glue those tips on, they file your own nails to the zero. I've been their client before I started doing nails. I was always covered in a cold sweat when I came out. I was bleeding from somewhere. It's just horrendous, yeah. right? So, yeah. so I decided that sculpting is a way, is a way um, beautiful nails. There is no tips involved, not over filing involved. Minus the smell, of course, the odors of the acrylic that all so many nail techs are saying they've done it for years and they get lots of headaches and things out of the odors and and because they're always exposed to it and and things that it just so many things was just hard gel, hard gel because it's it's so many different ways it's so much better and um, yeah and it's kind of coming on more and more, doesn't it? It improves all the time. So I tr truly believe we will get to the point one day when there is like, why you want acrylics? Because gel is like yeah. so versatile and, and it's just so much better. I, 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 that's what I feel anyway. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm quite yeah. about a hard gel anyway, so yeah. So for some of the techs that are having a hard time um, deciding what to do, um, I always tell them try, you know, call and get a trial kit from the companies and just try the different products and find what's best for you. Um, mm -hmm. uh, and, and then find out what cost is going to be best for you. Truthfully, when I've done the cost breakdowns, because I teach courses on um, how to know what, how to charge and know exactly what your overhead is, your product costs, your table costs and stuff. And when I do the breakdowns of, of those, I have found that the acrylic and the hard gel really come down to the same, you know, if not pennies on the difference. It's the art that makes a difference or if they're doing it as a sculpt or a tip um, and the time. So um, so when it comes to, uh, so always a big debate um, would be like if a client walks in and they said, oh, do you want acrylic or hard gel? That obviously would be a huge debate. And so I don't want to get into that as, mm -hmm. as at all. But when a client comes in and they have acrylic on, I, I've noticed a lot of the techs say, oh, I don't fill other people's product. And I, I do. I am. Um, I I disagree with the idea of filling somebody else's product. The reason why that that tech is in your chair is because they've chosen to find a different tech. So there's a reason why they're not with that tech. So that's your opportunity. And you could either remove what they have on and then you know build up, or if the product is good, have them either sign a disclaimer or really talk to them a lot about, um, you know, I'm gonna put my product over this. There's a possibility, you know, there might be some lifting in a few weeks when you come back and we can talk about that. Um, however, you know, I just want you to know that what I use is different. And so how do you go about if somebody comes into your salon and they have one product on, whether it's hard gel or acrylic, and then you, they're asking you to do a fill on them. Do you go ahead and do that? Or do you, what's your process of how you do that? Well, when somebody comes with acrylic, I have to remove it because I don't do acrylic, so I can't infill acrylic with gel. I don't agree with that. So there's probably going to be – also, I'm not sure if the products might react with another. So I don't want to take that responsibility um, causing harm to the client rather than um, doing proper service. So if it's acrylic, I do remove acrylic. Uh, when it's a gel, I had one client come in to me with the gel asking for infill. And once you start removing that top layer of gel, then you, you can kind of tell what the gel is like, what it feels like, how it has um, 
um, bonded with the nail bed and things like that. If there's no lifting, it's nice and solid. I have no problem with covering gel with gel. Um, most gel products, as far as I'm aware, they are compatible with another, so there shouldn't be any. Um, but if I have any doubt, always I always remove it because I don't want to take that responsibility on my shoulders that something might go wrong or, yeah, it's better to be safe than sorry, I believe. So. Right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. I have found um, when people come in, and, you know, like what you talked about, they don't really know if they have acrylic or gel. Um, mm. But I find that once I'm filing in the product, I can either smell it or I can um, yeah. I can feel the difference. And so getting to know your products like that is important. So that if somebody does mm. come in, you know how to address that. Um, mm. I, I have found that usually if I just file them really thin, if they have any lifting at all, um, because my, my products don't lift. So if they have any lifting at all, I don't even mess with that. I'll remove them and do a new set. But if I notice that, that the bond is good, then I'll go up over that and, and just really educate them and talk to them as we go. Yeah. Well, that's one fun. So another thing that you chose to do is specialize in nail art. And so yeah. what about, what drew you to nail art? Um, it, it, there is just so much amazing nail art out there. Also, I found that is that would be this little bit of something that separates me from all the other nail techs and services that is out there. So I have this little bit of extra to offer to the customer, and they would want to come back to me, and they do, they really do. Yeah, they do love their artwork. So, and I love drawing as well. So, not that I'm good drawing on a paper or anything, but on the nails. People are like, oh, you're so artistic and you're so um, talented. I'm like, no, not really. It's it's just down to practicing. I find it, like, I don't know. I always say, like, for example, we, we weren't born um, with the knowledge how to use chopsticks, for instance. You learn it, don't you? It's the same thing. So you just have to practice, 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 and it will it will come. So it's the same with the nail art. And on the, in yeah, the you people struggling but you should keep at it and keep practicing and there is so much material in, in YouTube and and Facebook it's all over the place there's so much available and just you know educate yourself and keep trying out different ways and things it's funny actually I just came back from Estonia and I did um, two nail design courses and when I went there I was like I've actually already know how to do it I've done that already on my own just from online and things. And I was like, I don't really need to be here because I already know how to do it. I just need to carry on practicing. So you just have to keep keep at it, just keep going for it and just try and practice. And that's all it is, a bit of yeah. determination. You, <laughs> yeah, you glow when you talk about nail art and I, <laughs> I, I love it. I can oh. say that over all the years, I always thought it was my perfect pink and white that got me you know, notice just because, but what I realized after I did a move and stuff, when people were looking through my portfolio, it was all my art. When people mm -hmm. talk about me, other texts talk about me, they talk about my art. And I never knew that that was, I don't know, my thing, I guess. I just thought everybody did it. And so um, I, I love doing it. And so um, what, what oh, mediums of art do you like to do? Is it preferred like encapsulation? Do you like 3D? Do you like the hand art stamping? I What's try a little bit of everything, a little bit of everything. Um, I just randomly, I just, I was um, browsing Instagram and I came across with this little elf drawn on a, on a nail. And I just took a tip, bit of brush, bit of gel paint, started painting. And everybody's like, oh, wow, you can paint. I was like, oh, yeah, I think I can. <laughs> but like, you just have to try. So I just try a bit of everything. And and it just some some things work better than the others, and what you feel more comfortable with, you just you just, you should just carry on with it and 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 keep at it, and, and it will come. Yeah, I just try a bit of everything, and there's still so much I still want to try. Sometimes I'm on my on my phone just browsing pictures and tutorial step by step things, and and my husband's like, "Are you ever gonna get off your phone? <laughs> I could just stay there all day browsing designs." Yeah, it's just fantastic. <laughs> my favorite thing to my husband is like, but I'm working. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I do say that as well. Yeah, I'm working. <laughs> I've got a business to run. <laughs> right. Yeah. I, I, um, 
I, it's funny because when stamping came out years and years ago, I mean, honestly, like, I think I was still in high school and it came out and it was like a credit card machine. And so you put your stamping plate on there and then you put a daub of paint on there and you did the old credit card. You did it like a swipe thing across. Oh, and when it went back, it picked up. So the first swipe took off the paint. The second swipe picked up the image and then would stamp it on your nail. And it honestly never worked. Clients were scared because they had to stick their hand underneath this thing that you're kind of like moving across the top. And uh, so when stamping became popular again, I was like, I'm not even going to invest in that. You know what? I've tried it. Um, I, I'm not going to do it. And at that time, I was doing a lot more hand art and uh, airbrushing and stuff like that. And mm -hmm. and so then one day I saw somebody's nails. I was at the grocery store and her nails looked phenomenal. And they, the artwork was perfect. And she's like, oh, yeah, she just stamped it. And I was like, oh, that stamping, you know. And uh, so as much as I was like, nope, I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do it. Oh my goodness, you know, technology changes. And I've been around enough to see many things more than just stamping go into a trend and then come back again. And each time it comes back, I can guarantee you it's so much better and it's worth trying again. So um, a lot of people will throw out their old nail supplies and I'm like, no, save it, you know, as long as it doesn't go rancid or go bad because like foiling, no joke, I have foiling from 1994, and it's popular again, and the foiling is actually the same kind of texture, but the foils that I have, I can't find anywhere, <laughs> and so don't throw away your old art supplies, Re, you know, reuse them sometimes if the trend goes out, or remaster it, or get on YouTube and find another technique that somebody might be using with it, because now they're even taking them and just taking like a hole punch and cutting the foil and putting it on as a design that way, and so you're using foiling in a different way. And yeah. so I love the ever changing of art. Yeah, yeah, me too. Definitely, you can like stamping. You can use you can use stamping and 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 painting together, or stamping and freehand stuff. You can just combine it, and it will be it will come out with something fantastic. You're just playing around with things. Foiling, I'm wearing foil right now. Actually, you're talking about foiling. So, <laughs> so yeah, yeah, foil, foils I are love... amazing as well. You can you can just do foiling underneath, like capsulate it or, or something, and then just paint some flowers and things on it, and 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 it works. It's it's fantastic. Yeah, yeah. you just have to play around with things. But, the, the options are endless. Oh, I know. So I I tell a story that um, so when I was in high school, Mr. Dartman was my art teacher, and he almost failed me in art. And I thought, oh, if he could see the masterpieces I create on something this big, he yeah. it would be my. So my argument with them was, though, is that we had to recreate a picture, and it was one of those that was like a decorative bowl and had fruit and flowers and stuff with it. And we had to recreate that picture exactly. And I didn't want to recreate it exactly because that was that artist's creation. I felt that as an artist, we should be recreating our own or making it our own and using inspiration from them and making it our own. And so over the years, I have stuck with that in my head over and over of, I don't have to make this look like the picture the people brought in. I don't have to make this do that. I'm being graded by a teacher right now. These clients are here because they trust me and they want it personalized to them. And so I talked to them about that a little bit, but I always laugh that I seriously, no joke, almost filled art because I was arguing with the teacher too much about always mm -hmm. copying what everybody else did and I wasn't able to express myself. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, no, it makes sense, definitely. I always try it if I find a picture of design online and I start kind of copying it because I want it, I want it to look as perfect as on a picture. I always ended up doing something my own on it or adding things to it or always, yeah. Even on a training when I was doing training just now, there, there is something I have to do, but then I was always adding stuff. I just couldn't help myself. I was like, oh, he could do yeah. a bit of this and a bit of that, and you just keep playing around with them. <laughs> yeah, yes, yeah, absolutely. So I want to give some shout-outs. We have um, quite a few people that are watching us, Adele and Louise and Sharon. And, um, I love that you guys have taken the time to join us on this. Ask us questions. Um, um, Annika has been licensed for a year and a half. She has had to uh, not fight her way for education, but she really had to do a lot of – Oh, how do you want to say that? Self-improvement. Self-improvement yeah. to say 
I don't want just this. I want better education. And you're still obviously going back for more. And, oh, you know, more to add to that that might help other people that are on that line? Um, if you're passionate about now, so anything really, just keep kind of, you just have to keep pushing yourself. Just keep finding that inspiration of, I don't know, like um, painting, for example, or, or just drawing freehand pictures or designs on the nails and, and just keep kind of browsing online. There is just so much available out there. That's, 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 the, that's the main inspiration, really, because, and the best place, the best people actually to follow on the nail designs are Russians, Russians, ladies, oh, my God. They are fantastic. You can't find anything better than Russians do. And I follow lots of Russian nail art. It is fantastic. Some of it is so simple, so simple. And you look at it first thing, you're like, oh, my God, I will never be able to create that. But once you know how to, it is so simple. When you when your client comes in, you just create it with, like, it just takes extra five, ten minutes. But the effect is like enormous and, and people people come back to you and they say, oh, I've been getting so many comments about my nails. They look so fantastic. And and yeah, so just look for inspiration and just, just try things out. And it, lots of it, I think, is stuck in, in the head as well. Some people look at something and they say, oh, I, can't, I won't be able to do that. How do you know if you don't even try? Just go for it. Just try. And if you don't yeah. know how... Ask online. There's so many people who are willing to share the information and knowledge. Just ask and just go for it. Don't think you can't. Yes, you can. Mm. Definitely. That's what I really like about this group. I actually had a Halloween design that was, oh my goodness. I was tagged in it so many times and then even clients were sending it to me. I want to do this. I want to do this. And, um, and so I did find the artist of it. And it took her four hours to do it as a fill and all these mediums that she used in it, which I did have a lot of them, but I finally just, oh my gosh, we're getting so many hearts. <laughs> and so I finally um, just was honest with the, with the, the girl that wanted it. And I said this, she charged $200 for this fill. It took her four hours to do it. And I'm confident in my work and I'm pretty sure I could, you know, pull that off, but I've not practiced it. And so I want mm. to practice it before I would do it on you. And, um, cost wise, I told her similar in pricing and immediately she was like, no, I just want it for $40 or less. So I don't think sometimes the clients even understand all of the detail and all of the work that it takes mm. to go in to the art and the time and we need to be um you know we need to charge for that we need to be compensated for our time as well as our knowledge in that i love all these hearts they're just <laughs> lighting up the stage. Yeah. and so and so i appreciate um people who really do charge for their art and stuff and i find more and more when i'm looking through this group that i'm under charge even even myself and so this right. group has helped me it helped me refine a few little things and, mm -hmm. and I love that part of the networking. And so how do you go about charging for your artwork? Well, at the moment, because I'm still kind of establishing myself properly because I've been actually doing mobile service. So in England, we can go to, to a like, person's home, do the nails that way because I was still juggling two jobs like support work and nail tech. So I'm just dropping my support work hours now to the very minimum I can. There's a couple of people I just can't dump, so I, I, I do have to stick with them and support them, and I just can't leave them. Uh, I've, been, I've been going to them for years. So anyway, and um, so, yeah, um, with pricing, I'm just getting established in a salon now. Um, so I'm just kind of tweaking my prices at the moment. So basically, I was thinking to say, like, um, People love accent now, don't they? Like um, design on just a ring finger or thing like that. So I thought I'd keep that within the price. Um, Got to be like simple enough design, of course. But then if somebody wants design on every every finger now, then I would I would probably add, let's say, pound for each nail or things like that, a little bit extra. So I think you can, you know, the way you feel like once, now I feel like I'm, I'm able to do more, complicated designs that will take a bit longer time so now I feel like um, I can charge for it a bit more because before I wasn't like so confident I was like oh it's just so simple and this and that mind you wasn't it was still the same kind of quality I'm doing now but 
But now after doing training, I feel like I can do actually more than I thought I can, you know. So, um, mm -hmm. so that made me feel more confident to actually charge for it. So that's what mm -hmm. I'm going to do now. So, so yeah, definitely. Yeah. Yvonne has that's... asked a question. Sorry, that was such a long time ago, bless her. <laughs> can I answer it? Is that okay? Yeah. Um, with, with removing gel, um, I have understanding. I do not like to soak anybody's nail in, nails in acetone. I'm really against it because acetone dissolves all the natural oils in your own nails. That's when people are starting to struggle with really brittle nails and can't grow them after even few soaks. I was going to say after years of soaking, but even few, few soaks will do it. Basically, how I remove it, you do, well, in my case, I'm, I'm trained with e-file. So I do work with e-file and I do remove with the file. But I remove only to the very thin layer of the gel. I never file a person's own nail, never natural nail bed. Um, so just remove it enough so I'm happy with it. Then I take a hand file and I just file it down as much as I can. And um, with the file... Once you're comfortable with it, you have really have to know what you're doing, mind you. Um, also, never file natural nail bed. Uh, just remove the gel, and then and then just infill. That's how I do it. But if you, I have removed it completely as well. Just use really gentle files, like 180 grit, maybe 150, it depends. And and just very gently, and make sure you just file gel, and it doesn't really have to be removed. 100%. If it's removed 98%, I'm already happy with that. And normally clients mm -hmm. don't mind as well. And then just, um, if person doesn't want to have any more gel or anything on the nails, I always advise just keep oiling them with cuticle oil. If you don't have cuticle oil at home, just cream or I just, sometimes I even tell ladies, when you cook, just slap a bit of olive oil or something on it. That would be it's fine. As long as it's oil, it doesn't matter what kind of oil. So that's what I advise them. Um, and I've had clients who actually tried it out because over here, everybody's getting their nails soaked. And I said, I do not soak anybody's nails. I'm quite against it. And I had this lady who was really, very particular and her own nails are very nice and strong. And she had um, she had her nails soaked recently. And she was like, oh, no, no, I don't want any anything on my nails. But she was really intrigued because I was explaining how I do it. So she actually had a go and we, we kind of tested the the theory out and she was really happy with the end result when I removed she still because I did like overlay on her own nails and I removed it later after three weeks and she was still having her own nails in a full length she had no problems with them and she was really impressed and she was telling everybody about it which was great for me thank you very much so yeah it yeah. works so um, yeah I don't soak anybody's nails and I'm quite against it so yeah. Well, I, I'm agreeing with you. I, even on the acrylic side of it, I don't soak them off. In fact, as long as your product is always good and you don't have any lifting, I don't find a reason why they need removed at all. I have clients that mm -hmm. have worn their nails for years with never getting a new set. You know, you if there's a repair, I you know deal with it at the time, but I file them thin and then rebuild them back up. I see that there's a lot of comments on here about being able to soak off, but the topic that we're talking about is hard gel and not a lot of... I think there is one company out there now that is saying that they, it's a soak off hard gel, but most hard gels you cannot soak off. And so whether you're using alcohol, like a suggestion, or you're using acetone, you could soak them for hours and it won't make any difference on the product. Mm -hmm. And so you have to file them thinner. And so some of the suggestions, just remember that what we're talking about is more hard gel. With acrylic, yes, you can put a cotton ball with aluminum foil and all that. I find that the cotton ball will absorb most of that acetone. And then when you wrap it in foil, you can't see that. And then wrapping it in foil gives the client the freedom to be able to move around and move the hand this way. And sometimes the acetone would run down. And so if I was to soak somebody off, I would actually do it in a glass bowl, make it just enough that it would cover just their fingernails and keep them in that because they're getting the pure acetone and make sure that it's 100% acetone, no extra fillers, no waters, no dyes, no nothing in it, 100% acetone. And um, you can get them to soak off in about, if you've thinned it down first and taken off of your gel polish and your glitters, you can get them to soak off in about 20 minutes. Um, however, I agree with Annika. I don't soak anybody off. I have acetone in my salon, but it's, it honestly just sits there. And so um, I use my e-file as well. Somebody else had made a comment of if you use your e-file on high. 
and I looked down at my e-file, most of the time my speed is between, um, like if it's a gas tank, I'm between um, a fourth and a half. Um, that's probably my top speed that I go on. I can say if I'm dremeling off or e-filing off like a, a thicker glitter that's mi mixed in there, I'm definitely more towards the half tank. Um, so, but every e-file will be a little bit different. So you gotta find um, what's best for you to where the e-file is actually grabbing the product and not mm -hmm. just spinning on top. Or when yeah. you touch it, e-file will stop. And so you're gonna have to find that right medium for you. Yeah, it's hard to give any numbers really because all those files are different aren't they yeah yeah absolutely um so yvonne also said what do you do for the overlays when the natural nail curls do you want to um, go ahead and and what i would do i would i would just advise the client really say if she's happy that her nails curl fine end of the day she she whatever she wants but i would advise um if it's a couple of nails, normally there's pointy fingers, aren't they? And um, I just, I would just suggest the, the extension on these nails, really, uh, sculpted ones. Um, yeah, I would just sculpt the nail tip, I guess, and then just lift it with that. Um, but, but then again, it, it, you have to um, ask the opinion of the client because she got to wear them, and, and if she's really keen to keep her natural nails, then she got to have a curled nails. That's, that's what I would do anyway. So you have to respect what client wants. But if she wants straight now and it curls, I would definitely build it, sculpt it, and just file it straight and all that. So yeah, build it up that way. How do you, so she wants to know though, when it separates from the product, what would you do? What do you mean separates from the product? So I think oh, what Yvonne's saying is that as the nail grows out, the natural nail sometimes ah. will dry up and curl up and come away from the product. Yeah, um, so yeah. Like wanting to know what you do about that. I I actually I actually um, file underneath the nail. I do that because I'm trained to do that because that's it's really common on nail sculpting in Estonia the way we do it. When you build the nail up and you kind of straighten it and it starts curling and your nail um, can comes loose from the nail tip, I I just remove it. You just have to have a drill bit for it that goes under the nail. And you really, really carefully, obviously, and try not to touch the um, the smile line or anything like that. So you have to kind of, but well, that's what I do anyway. And I just file the nail off so it wouldn't kind of curl. So that that will stop that. So that's what I do. What would you do? Yeah. I, I, well, I find if, so if, I, I, if there's so many different things in here. So I sculpt. And so therefore, I don't tend to have a whole lot of problems with the lifting from the backside. What I find is it's usually if somebody has done a tip and then the glue has broke down. So where the tip and the glue is where there's no acrylic or hard gel or any product touching it, that can separate, meaning that the glue broke down first. Um, with that, I would almost remove that nail and then sculpt out a new nail. If yeah. the nails are long, that she's had them on, on forever, they're her natural nail, and for some reason one of them has dried and kind of curled down, I actually remove the product. Um, I don't just file off the backside. The reason why is because all the rest of her nails are that length as well. And so I want to mm -hmm. use her natural nail for that. And so if all of the nails are hers, and um, then what I would do is remove the product on the top of that and then rebuild it to match the nail the way that it is. Because curling means that it has gotten dry. And then after that, you need to um, remind them to use oils. Now with oils, what's important is that a lot of people will say, I use lotion all the time and it doesn't make a difference. Okay, if you put lotion on your hands and you rub it on, is it really gonna get down into the cuticle area even if they rub it? It's a cream, so it's not going to get into there. Another thing is, is mineral oil is an oil that's made in our land. And it's wonderful, it's a great protector. But our, the molecules are too large for our skin to absorb it. So therefore, it's a skin softener. And you'll see the, the, the lotions that have mineral oil and it will say great for skin softening, but you notice it won't say healing. It's a softener that goes up on top it will not absorb and neither will lanolin. Lanolin is on sheep, like, you know, when they share the sheep, it too has large molecules and it's a great topical thing. So what I tell my clients is, is find a natural oil, no matter what they use. Like currently I'm using this one on my desk just because I went on vacation 
and I wanted the coconut scent and stuff like that. So this is a black castor oil. It's very thick. It's an emollient. It soaks in completely. And then if they're very dry on top of that, put on the lotion that has the mineral oil or lanolin or something. And then that would keep the, this natural oil from evaporating out of your skin. And so knowing those oils and knowing how they work is, is very important as well. Um, yeah. Anyways, to go back to that, though, keeping the nail flexible and keeping the nail healthy will prevent it from curling down on the backside. Quite often, though, I do advise my clients to oil their cuticles, do this and that, but do they really? Not really, do they? <laughs> you can tell them what you like. <laughs> they come back and I'm like, oh, your cuticles are very dry. Every time, same thing. Oh, yeah. I could have done a bit yeah. more oiling, but yeah, yeah, yeah. So it goes. You know what? I call that job security. If our clients took care of their nails the way that we always suggested to them, there's a possibility that they would just continue doing it the way, that same yeah. way and be great. Um, job security means that they need us to help them with that. And so yeah. I don't get upset when my clients don't use cuticle oil. <laughs> yeah. So. Yvonne, thank you so much for those questions. It's nice to be able to be able to interact with you guys. And hopefully, you know, when one person asks a question, hopefully it will help other people as well. And these live feeds continue to repost in our discussion page. And so therefore, people that are not live with us right now will still be able to watch this and learn from there. So I appreciate the questions. Thank you so much. And then, so Yvonne, and I think it is your sister, Leah? Yeah. Okay, so I have a similar story to yours. My cousin was a nail tech and um, she lived in California and I just moved from California to Wyoming and I hated Wyoming. All I wanted to do was go back to California, um, but I became an EMT. And so like you, um, I was a nail tech and an EMT and I noticed as an EMT, the stuff that I had to deal with, I could not let, let loose. And so I felt like I was always having this pressure inside of me of a negativity that um, I could not fix and mm -hmm. I'm a fixer and I'm a doer and, and in a case like that I could not fix these people all I was was a transportation service and yeah. seeing them at their worst and, and, and it's hard to let that go and so when I um, I moved back to California for a little while and I could not afford it I did not have the skills and nails to be able to build up a clientele that fast and anyways I ended up moving back to Wyoming and just honestly accepting um, nails as a job because I thought that's not a real job. You know, I'll get a real job someday. And, yeah. um, and I have tried other things, but I've stuck with the nails and I can say it's so rewarding. So I know it can be frustrating in the beginning, finding the education and finding your specialized area and stuff. But when you have family support, like you do of your husband, and you have inspiration like you do of your sister and I did of my cousin, and that kind of leads you on. And now with technology, our inspiration, our support can be each other in this industry as well. And it's, it's fabulous. And so, um, I don't know, do you want to give a shout out to your sister? Yeah. Uh, thanks, Leah. <laughs> she knows it all. Oh, bless yeah. her. Yeah. She's fantastic. She's just opening her own salon in Norway now. And, uh, Good luck to her with that, and and I wish I could I could just travel up there and just you know help her with 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 loads of advertisement and everything, and just give it a love you too, <laughs> and uh, and uh, give her lots of support with that. But she's gonna be fabulous. She is. She's so good. I'm so proud of her, and she'll be fine. She, yeah, I'll help her the, the way I can from here, and she'll be fine. Yeah, yeah. I'm excited for her. So I think. I think what's really interesting and kind of cool aspect about that is it's almost like you have an insider in another area. Like, well, what products are you using? Well, what are you using? Well, I tried this today and I tried this today. So my cousin and I still go back and forth and be like, hey, like, right. So she asked me, it's like, I need a fun Santa face to be able to do. And, and um, anyways, my mission today is to come up with a f couple of fun Santas that I can share with her. And then likewise, she th shares things with me. So I like that it's, I don't know. It's an extra personalized thing that, you know, I don't get from anywhere else. Yeah. Yeah. Use an opportunity to advertise yourself. Well done. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's Bless. wonderful. So um, let's see. Where do you go for nail art inspiration? What you mean? 
Okay, so like a lot of my clients will come in with pictures and I find that most of the places that they find these pictures are off of Pinterest. And so sometimes like I create boards and I go through Pinterest and I find inspiration. But for my inspiration, honestly, it's when, um, when they come in, I look at what they're wearing and I notice a lot of my clients will wear the same kind of colors. Um, like for me, I wear a lot of grays, pink, blush colors, and black. And then my nails usually reflect, you know, that kind of same thing. Um, but like if they wear a lot of turquoise, then sometimes I'm like, hey, do you want to do turquoise on your nails? And they're like, I never thought about that. And I'm like, well, you wear it every time you come in. So for my go-to inspiration, it's usually what they're wearing. And sometimes it's not a hit. <laughs> sometimes they're like, yeah. no, I do not want to match this. <laughs> and so where do yeah. you go to for your inspiration? Well, I get lots of information, information, inspiration <laughs> from Instagram. I love Instagram. There is some fantastic people in Instagram. Pinterest as well. There is so much stuff in there. Um, sometimes, quite often actually, my clients come to me and, and they have a little picture or something with them that they have found on the internet. Uh, sometimes I try and do it. Sometimes I'm like, ah, it's a bit boring. We can do better than that. <laughs> Um, so yeah, I just kind of suggest, yeah, sometimes it's also, also helps when you get to know your client, then you know what they like and, um, kind of match the colors and designs with their personality or, or things like that. So yeah, I do that. Sometimes I just kind of try and experiment and, and, and most of the time it works and people are pleasantly surprised. Oh yeah, I never thought of that. And they absolutely yeah. love it. Uh, I do have a couple of people who are always wear same color and same designs as well. And I'm like, should we try slightly something different? <laughs> just gentle <laughs> suggestion. Yeah, well, I, just, I just have fun with it. Yeah, Pinterest, Instagram, best places, obviously. And uh, yeah, a bit of YouTube. Yeah. And yeah, I always, absolutely. if I really like something that I see online, I kind of quickly sketch it on a nail tip so I can show it to my clients. And kind of point them in a direction I want them to go to. <laughs> so I do that yeah. sometimes. Yeah. That's so fun. I find that when they bring me in like three pictures, and if they're kind of similar um, in what they're wanting, I'll be like, then let's combine them all. Let's let's make all of these you know, palettes onto you. And they're like okay, can you do that? And then once they get to know me, they're like, I know you can do it. I brought in 10 pictures so that you could do it. I'm like, oh my God, <laughs> I don't want to be challenged today. <laughs> yeah, it happens, yeah. Yeah, sometimes they just, some, sometimes people like, they want some kind of like, I don't know, very basic stuff. And they're like thinking, I don't, they just, they, I don't know, they just don't realize that you, you can do it so much inventive way. I don't know how to describe it, but yeah, sometimes you suggest things and they're like surprised, like, oh, can you really do that? Oh, can we do that? Then they get all excited. I love the bit when they get all excited. They're like, oh, oh, I didn't think you could do it like that. And then they love it yeah. as well. So yeah, it's really good fun. Yeah, absolutely. And my clients are really good to me. The ones that that they know it might be pushing a little bit of time, they'll they'll respect that and say, you know, should I reschedule my appointment? I really would like to try something like this. Or sometimes I can look at it and say, oh no, I can do that in a different, you know, like I know how I can pull that off easier. So I love that they interact with me and don't just show up and expect that. And, and um, so I, they send me, you know, messages of, hey, I was thinking about this for my next nail appointment. What do you think? And, yeah. and I love that part of it, but you have to be open to them and you have to create that conversation with them so that they know that I that's to, okay. I actually encourage them to do that. I'm like, try and look around online, have a look in Pinterest. If you really like something, just send me a picture so that I can kind of prepare or, you know, just try it out before we put it on your nail. Or I encourage my clients to do that. Yeah, that helps really. Yeah. Helps so, so Mickey says that she's the opposite, that her clothing is always quite neutral, but, um, but my nails, well, they are as loud as I can get away with. And I love that. I, yeah. I tell a story about, so I have a girlfriend of mine that has, um, she's traveled the world and she's was in the Peace Corps. And so she's been in a lot of, um, let's say just less fortunate areas. And so when they got their house and moved here, she has a, you know, kind of a gray slate house um, and dark gray trim, a beautiful, bright lime green door. And I was like, wow, like, um, like Lindsay, why, 
why the door? Why, you know, why the lime green door? And she says, you know, I've traveled the world and I've seen so many colors and I realized that um, so many people go neutral just because it's safe. And so the bright lime green door reminds her of the areas that she's been to and to be thankful every time she walks through that door that she has a house, be thankful every time she walks that door that it's happy. And, um, and so I love the meanings that people get behind their nails too. Most of the time when they do something, they're like, oh, you know, I want to remember, you know, somebody with this or my son wants me to do this on my nails. And so I love that we can personalize that for them even deeper than just um, just the art. Like there's always some hidden meaning in there. I have a client that every time she comes in, we hide a Mickey on her nails, a Mickey face. She will have the most elegant nails and there's this little tiny Mickey Mouse in there and it makes her giggle every single time. Aww. And so I love the personalization that I get with the art. It's a, it's a heart, you know, a heartfelt thing for me. Yeah, that is nice, yeah, yeah. so cute. Yeah. yeah. And so like with Mickey, you know, sometimes how we might perceive to people one way with the way we dress in neutrals or whatever, but boy, when they see our nails, they'll just know that we have a little bit of spunk in us. And that's, that's yeah. great. That's, I, yeah. I admire people like that. Yeah. I get quite often comment, oh, these are statement nails, aren't they? When I do my own nails, <laughs> like, oh, yeah. bold colors. And yeah, people do comment. Yeah. No, it's good fun. But then my clients do ask, but what's on your nails? Because sometimes they come in, I already have gloves on and things, and, oh, but what's on your nails? They really want to know. So, yeah. And isn't it so funny that most of us nail techs, well, well, my nails are actually done, but that's because I just went on vacation. But we'll find that one hand is done and one hand is not. Or we have artwork on one hand and not on the other. And yeah. so um, I always tell people, if you go to a nail tech and her nails look perfect all the time, then she's not busy enough. <laughs> <laughs> exactly yeah i agree goodness sometimes they want to see my hands i'm like oh i haven't had time to do them like four weeks <laughs> yeah it's funny yeah it's absolutely funny. Mm. yeah um, so we've been on for almost an hour annika the time goes by so fast when we do these and i appreciate all the people that um, have come on and shared some things with us. And so if you have any questions, you can continue to ask questions on these lives and then Annika and I will be able to see them where we can respond. And so even if you have not watched it live, please still ask questions on there. And then I'm, I'm like that the minute one done, <laughs> you know, isn't that funny? You can, you can kind of always tell the nail techs, huh? Yeah. And then Shana, my story. Hi, Shana. Thank you for joining us today. And then Kim says, I... I had Yeo different set one on each hand and my client laughs. <laughs> yeah. I love it when, like, especially if we've been practicing something and we need to practice on ourselves, you know, sometimes we're our best models. And I love it how sometimes one nail will be totally different than the rest. I was mm -hmm. showing how to demonstrate a stiletto nail um, and encapsulating to make the fire and ice look. And I was showing that in a class. All the rest of my nails, short and French manicure. My pinky nail, long and stiletto and fire and ice. <laughs> I wore it that way. I wore it that way for almost a week. It actually drove me absolutely crazy, but I didn't want to take it off because it looked beautiful. Yeah. Start a new trend. Why not? Soon everybody will be walking around like that. Oh, I want nails like yours. Maybe that's how the trends of the statement fingers always came about, is it was the nail techs always playing on one, like, oh, my nails like yours. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I like that idea, yeah. That's a good one. <laughs> that's wonderful. Um, yeah. Well, uh, you know, Annika, is there anything else you, that you want to add um, while we're here? Hmm. I think we covered pretty much everything, haven't we? Yeah. Can't think so what could you leave that would be encouraging for somebody who's thinking, uh, that maybe their education isn't quite where they want it, but they're already enrolled in school. They've already, you know, have the finances out. Um, what kind of a, uh, encouragement could you give to them for, like, once they're licensed, what's the next step? Well, that's a difficult one, isn't it? Um, I suppose just have to search around, and if you're not happy of what your education is going like, then obviously – if you already paid for it and everything, you have to see it through and and um, and just take the most of it. And then um, 
just keep looking for different courses. There's so many nail masters out there who, who give so much, so many wonderful different kind of trainings and things, and it's worth of doing because you benefit from it like massively and and it will stay with you isn't it and you keep improving all the time and i'm gonna carry on doing courses all the time and i'm not gonna stop but i just i just i just want to see where i'm gonna end up because um there's so much still i want to learn and do and and yeah just keep searching around keep um asking people or i don't know if i see sometimes one of those um what these nails called Oh, I can't think of the word now. My mind gone blank. Competition <laughs> nails. <laughs> yeah. yeah, one of those like butterfly or bat nails. Or, you know, those really extreme long, long ones and things like that. And and I really want to do that one day. And, and I just kind of trace up the people who, who do it and then try and get a, in a contact and, and just, just communicate and ask and, and just be as nosy as you can and just want to know everything. You just have to take this kind of, initiative of because it's all for yourself all everything you do is for yourself and you just have to invest into it that's all you can do and then yeah. just keep pushing shouldn't give up yeah yeah and and, so, and the right mindset i said earlier as well right mindset is there's no such thing you can't do it yes you can sit down and do yeah. it cause, yeah because i've been so frustrated sometimes doing those really correct lines and i just can't do it and i get so frustrated i just want to throw those brushes in the corner but then a few days later you just sit down and you just feel your hand has got so much smoother and better the lines come so much prettier so just don't give up just keep at it and then it will come it will come you just practice 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 yeah Yvonne, you just, you're making me, my heart smile. You have so many hearts going across our screen. I <laughs> love it. Um, so I did a live, um, I don't know, about a week and a half ago with Ella Waschik. And I don't know if you guys know her or not, but she's an amazing um, competitor. And she does talk a lot about the difference between competition nails and, um, you know, salon nails. And there are many differences in that. And now she's a judge and she teaches a master class as well. And uh, today she posted that she's been actually taking a, a nail art class. She wants to master nail art. And um, you talked about the Russian artwork earlier. And that's one of the things that she was talking about as well. And, and you know, even those that I look up to that I think are the masters, they just know it all, they're still learning as well. And I see a, a comment oh. that, you know, Mickey even put on there that, that, uh, that, I mean, even myself, I'm constantly, constantly getting in there and trying to surround myself with the inspiration for different nailer ideas and different nail ideas and stuff like that. And so I follow um, masters and I will friend request them because I want to see them in my newsfeed and on my Instagram and in my pages because I want to be inspired by them. And so they like that. They want you. That's why they're there. They want to share that education. And um, I know I get so many friend requests every day and I'll sometimes I'll ask them like, what what made you, you know, decide that you want to follow me? And they're like, I saw one of your lives and you inspired me so much and I want to see more of your work. And you know what? That's how everybody is. Even you as a newbie, you know, people might be able to follow you as well and say, hey, she's starting out like I am too. And I want to kind of follow on her rainbow. And so um, we have to network and use this network the way that it's meant to be. Follow each other, inspire each other, com Absolutely. communicate back and forth. Yes. And so um, I always think it's wonderful, though, when I can see that even the people that I look up to, are they're still educating themselves as well. And I'm like, ah. Oh. This is wonderful. It is constant yeah. educating all the time because also the products are changing so quickly. You have to keep up with it. If you want to be up there with the best ones, you have to keep up with it. Training, training, training constantly all the time. Like in Estonia, mm -hmm. uh, that's the more kind of comparison I can make. In Estonia, the nail technicians who me and Lee are looking up to, they got drawers full of certificates. They don't have a space on the walls anymore. They don't even display their certificates. They're just piling up. But they keep training all the time. Yeah. yeah. And I'm I'm going to definitely as well. And and talking with Leah the other day that um uh, because Estonia is so close to Russia, we share the border with Russia, we were actually talking about going into Russia and doing some training and getting some products from there, from the best ones. I, you just have to want it and you will find a way of doing it. So, so yeah, you just have to want it. And want I still it find it, 
Yeah, I, I, you know, like even talking with some of the master techs and bringing them in on like tech talk and getting to talk to them a little bit more. It's amazing how they don't feel that there is good is what we see. They still see all their imperfections and where they can improve. And so mm. I don't know that we will ever get to that point where we think, I got this, I got this completely. Yeah. You know, like even, even when it comes to art and it's something I've done over and over and over and over again, it's still something that I still get nervous about sometimes. And so mm -hmm. I, I realize that that's real and everybody has that. And so yeah. therefore I'm not gonna pound myself down anymore because I didn't get it again, you know? And so yeah, I, yeah. I like that. Definitely, yeah. Okay. I sometimes well, Annika, get, sorry, you were saying about ahead. getting nervous. I still get nervous sometimes about my own nail art. Sometimes I do like a sample on a nail tip for a customer. They're like, oh, I want that. And I, suddenly I get really nervous. I'm like, I don't know if I can recreate it. Yeah, of course I can. What am I nervous for? I, yeah, we all do. Anyways. <laughs> yeah, and you know when we've played around and we have actually come up with a design that we like it, I do sometimes just say, you know what, it was a one hit wonder. I'm not quite sure how I even achieved that the first time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but yeah, then you just go for it. Yeah. yeah. Gosh, it's been it, it's been an hour now, hasn't it? <laughs> I should, yeah. We're gonna end up talking all evening if we're not gonna wrap it up. <laughs> I love it. I do try to keep them to an hour because then that's about all that people will, you know, if they're listening to us while they're doing their makeup or they're listening to us on their way, you know, commute to work or whatnot. Yeah. It's about all they can can give in. So, um, but I'm like you, I could talk all day. I'm passionate about what I do and I love it. And I can tell that yeah. you are as well. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So. So with all that being said, though, Annika and I are going to have to um, end our session for today. So I do thank you so much for sharing your story. You're a great inspiration. And I love how you light up when you talk about it. I can tell that you're very passionate about this industry. And I cannot wait till you compete. I, I would love to be able to, um, to watch your transformation of what you can do on somebody's nails because, um, I don't know, you've inspired me as well. Oh, thank you so much, so, Amy. Thank you. You're welcome. So with all that being said, I just want to remind everybody. So Danny um, has reposted a new pinned post um, at the top of this group page. And um, she's just kind of updated some things that are on there about advertising and all of that. And so I want you to, to go back through and every now and then look at this pinned post. She also has um, showed a a video of how you can go into the pictures part at the top of our discussion page. It will show you like events, like where I post, you know, stuff like this that's, that's coming up and then post uh, pictures and stuff. And in those pictures, there's categories. So if you're looking for like Christmas nail art or Thanksgiving nail art, you can go in there into each one and find inspiration that way as well. And so um, the inspirations here in our group and then the people that have posted are usually the ones who have created that. So therefore you can talk to the creator of that art and figure out how they did it and so that you can help improve yourself as well okay. and so up in the pin post and at the top of our page there's so much information that you can use and then um, I'm going to be off for this coming uh, Thanksgiving weekend I know I just got back from vacation I took days off but it's Thanksgiving and we all need to concentrate with our families it's not always about nails and so I'm not going to have a tech talk coming up this weekend however on December 2nd at 5 p.m. on Mountain Standard Time um, John Hawk will be able to come on and you want to talk about a global competitor John Hawk has so many awards that I'm sure that there's not enough wall space an entire house to cover what he has. And so John Hawk has agreed to come on Tech Talk Live with me. And so I'll create an event for that. When you go onto the events, if you click going, then it will send you a reminder the day before and it sends you a reminder an hour before. So that way you don't always have to, you know, keep track of, oh gosh, when was that? And so, um, and then if you hit going, it also converts it to your time zone so that you will know exactly what time it is in your area as well. And so I just want to um, remind you that um, this nail group that we have is amazing and use it. We're here to help each other. And yeah. um, what Danny created in this group and the other admin, we have a couple new admin coming on. And so I don't know when they're going to be introduced yet, but pretty excited that we're expanding. And um, so our site is also global as well. So girls, enjoy this. This is what we're here for. But family first. So I'll see yes. you guys after Thanksgiving. Okay. Thank you. So Annika, thank, thank you so much again. You're such a delight to talk to. I, I appreciate Thanks. you. Thank you. All right. Bye, ladies. Thank you. Bye.